So let's suppose that an object with mass m, let's say a box, is moving along a horizontal surface with an initial velocity given by vi when it hits a spring with a spring constant given by the lowercase k. Now if the spring compresses a distance of change in x, let's calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction mu k. So in this example, we are looking at non-conservative forces acting on our moving object. So we have to use the law of conservation of energy. So let's look at our initial system and the final system. So what the law of conservation of energy states is that the total sum of all the energies initially is equal to the sum of all the energies in the final system. So in our initial system, our box just hits the spring, so the spring is not yet compressed. And the box is moving with initial velocity, vi, and it has a mass m. Now, in the final system, it has a velocity, vf, of 0 meters per second because it compressed the spring, a certain displacement given by change in x. So at the same time, even, even though some of that kinetic energy has become elastic potential energy, some of that kinetic energy has also dissipated in the form of thermal energy, in the form of internal energy because of friction. So the sum of all the forces initially is equal to the sum of all the forces in the final system. So initially we have kinetic energy, we have elastic potential energy, and in the final system we have our final kinetic energy, our final uh, potential energy, and and our change in thermal energy. And note that thermal energy increases because of friction. In other words, the change in thermal energy is equal to the work done by the frictional force. And the work done by the frictional force is equal to the average frictional force multiplied by our displacement. And displacement in this case is simply our change in x. So we can write all these guys in a following form. So our initial kinetic energy is equal to one half mv initial squared. Our initial, initial elastic potential energy is written with one half k change in x squared. Our final kinetic energy is equal to one half mvf squared plus so this final elastic potential energy is written as one half k change in x squared. And this is written in our force of friction times our displacement. So we're assuming the force of friction is constant. Now, notice initially our object, our spring, is not compressed. And that means because this change in x initially is zero, we, we have zero joules of elastic potential energy. Now, in the final system, our object, even though it has elastic potential energy, the box no longer has a velocity. The velocity is zero, and so that means the final kinetic energy is zero. So both of these terms goes to zero, and we get the following result. Notice the force of friction can be rewritten in the following notation. The force of friction is equal to the normal force, m times g, times the coefficient of kinetic friction as shown here. So now we can rewrite and solve for our mu k. So the coefficient of kinetic friction, mu k, is equal to this term, and then we subtract this term from this term, we get this. And then we divide by mg multiplied by our displacement. Now, notice that the halves appear on both of these terms, so the two can go on the bottom as shown here, and now we can simply divide both of these sides, so we divide them, and we get the following result. So, our coefficient of kinetic friction is equal to the initial velocity squared divided by two times g, the gravitational constant, multiplied by displacement, minus our uh, spring stiffness constant K multiplied by change in displacement divided by 2 mg.